And on complete the passage questions, we need to understand what information follows best and there'll be some hint in the paragraph that'll help us understand what we're looking for from the answer choices. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Inference questions. Our steps are always the same. Let's ID the question. How do we ID them? They often contain the words infer, they contain if above true or if the argument is true or if the information in the passage is true or conclude slash conclusion. The way support flows on these is they're saying if the paragraph is true then what must I know? If the paragraph is true what must I know? Which if you remember on weaken and strengthen questions there was a lot of this following if true. You notice how that's the exact opposite. On weaken and strengthen questions they're saying if the answer choices are true which one weakens or strengthens? Inference questions are asking us if the passage is true, what do I know? So when we're looking at these, there's not usually a conclusion, premise, and assumption. They usually either read like a story or just a list of information. And we'll see some examples of that. And when we're testing these, we're asking ourselves, must this be true based on what was stated? Can I point to it? Can I apply the point test? Can I point to the uh, inference? Can I point to the paraphrasing in the passage? Let's hold off no longer and take a look at some examples of this. So our process always the same. Let's go ahead and read the question together. If the statements to the left are true, great, I was anticipating seeing something like that. Which of the following conclusions is best supported? So they're saying if this stuff is true, it supports which of these? Let's go ahead and just read this paragraph to yourself and we'll work this question together. So this is how I like to work inference paragraphs. I like to just reword them in my own words, paraphrase them myself. Because if I paraphrase it, then the answer choice should match my paraphrasing as well. So all stars do not emit visible light. Great. I paraphrase that first piece. Some stars emit gamma rays. while others emit x-rays. I pulled the information from the paragraph into my own words. It didn't take me five minutes to do. It took me less than 30 seconds. And now I have their version and my version to work. We're looking for a paraphrasing of the paragraph. Let's take a look at A. A thorough analysis of visible light emissions is insufficient to monitor star energy emissions. So this is saying if you just look at visible light emissions, it's not enough to monitor star energy emissions. So this seems like a decent paraphrasing of what I said, because not all stars emit visible light, so a thorough analysis of visible light emissions would be insufficient to monitor all energy emissions from stars because some of them do gamma rays and some of them do x-rays. Let's hold on to that. Gamma rays are also a common type of energy emission in the Milky Way galaxy. Well, I remember gamma rays being mentioned. I wrote it here. It's also written here. But they don't talk about it being a common type. And so I can't point to that. I'm going to get rid of it. C. X-ray emissions found outside the Milky Way galaxy are always paired. So here's an extreme word, always, and it's not supported. I can get rid of C. I, don't, I can't point to where this extreme word is supported. This is why I like inference questions, especially, especially when they have extreme words in the answer choices. I can eliminate them pretty readily if I can't point to them. Dying stars. Okay, didn't see that mentioned. Can't point to it. We're pretty much done. Are more likely this is more likely. So again, we're seeing this word more. It means something and it's not even in there, so I can't support this answer choice. Telescopes capable of observing gamma rays are incapable of observing visible light rays. Another extreme word, incapable. Where does it say this? I can't point to it. I think I'm going to get rid of this. I can point to A. I can point to it in my own paraphrasing. I can point to it in here. 
I'm going to go with A. Great. So I'm going to take a quick second here to get, let, teach you about the, uh, the uh, moldy cheese rule of GMAT questions. Do you know this one, Jake? I don't think so. You don't know the, the moldy cheese rule? So sometimes you've got a block of cheese in your fridge and you're checking it out because you're hungry for some cheese. And you notice that there's a little bit of mold over here. And you're thinking to yourself, should I eat this cheese? I mean, there's just a little bit of mold over here. Can I just carve it off? Unfortunately, you can't. If you see some mold on cheese, the mold has probably been all throughout the cheese. You need to throw that whole block of cheese in the garbage. I'm sorry to tell you that. You need to get rid of all the cheese. If the cheese is a little moldy, throw the whole thing out. And it turns out the same thing applies to GMAT answer choices. If a little bit of the answer is moldy, you got to throw the whole thing out. We found some mold over here. This always not supported. Uh, dying stars, these words, no good. Moldy, get rid of the whole answer choice. If the answer choice is a little moldy, get rid of the whole thing. Great. Nice work. Let's try another inference question. Go ahead and read this passage, sorry, read the question and the paragraph to yourself and we'll work this one together. So again, you notice these are reading like a story. There's not really a, a conclusion, premise, and assumption. They're reading like a story. I do what I always do. I paraphrase it for myself. Let's see. In an effort to support local widget manufacturers, the state of New Carolina made it illegal for <coughs> excuse me, any individual or business in New Carolina to purchase widgets from outside of state. So illegal to buy widgets out of state. And then also numerous factories in New Carolina produce machinery that requires widgets and those factories were forced to raise their prices on their machinery. So machinery prices went up. So I pulled out the information in the passage and represented it in my own way. I should be able to find a paraphrase that matches with what I wrote and what with the passage wrote. Let's take a look. Answer choice A. Widget manufacturers in the state of New Carolina charge more for widgets than do out-of-state widget manufacturers. Okay, let's get all these pieces. So widget manufacturers in the, new, in, the, in the state of New Carolina, that's in there, charge more for widgets. Why would that have to be true? Let's hold on to that piece than do out-of-state man widget manufacturers. They talk about out-of-state widget manufacturers too. I just got to understand whether this is supported. Charge more. Why would it have to be true that they charge more? Well, it says that they had to raise their prices on their machinery and then that, that they require widgets. So I'm going to hold on to A. Let's take a look at B. The machinery that incorporates widgets is usually sold outside, United, the, the, uh, outside of New Carolina. So usually where do I, where can I support this word? I don't think I can. It seems kind of moldy. Let's get rid of it. The factories that used to buy out-of-state widgets sold the machinery that incorporated widgets to buyers in the same states from which the widgets originated. This is one of those answer choices that's trying to give me a headache by the time I'm done reading it. Usually I just kind of leave them for now because I still have two other answer choices to read. How about D? Out-of-state widgets had become increasingly expensive. And the resulting trade de I mean, all right, trade deficit, I'm pretty much done with this answer choice. Why does this have to be true? I can't point to it. It's not a paraphrasing of something in the passage. Great. Purchasing widgets from outside of New Carolina was crucial to the state's economy. Again, I don't feel like I can point to this crucial issue, so I'm going to get rid of that. Let's go back to C. The factories that used to buy out-of-state widgets sold the machinery that incorporated widgets to buyers in the same states from which the widgets originated. I don't know why this has to be true. It seems pretty convoluted. I can't point to it. I'm just going to get rid of it. A. 
widget manufacturers in the new state of Carolina charge more for widgets than do out-of-state widget manufacturers. That has to be true because they raise their prices on the machinery for the folks using it. It's the least sucky answer choice, and it's correct. So inference questions, our process worked, we ID'd inference questions, we knew what to expect, we're not looking for conclusions, premises, and assumptions, we're expecting the paragraph to read like a story or a list of items. The answer choice should paraphrase, I should be able to point to it. We got this on both of these questions that we saw. Nice work team. Let's go back and learn a little bit more. So the next question type that we're going to work today are evaluation of a plan questions. And as you can imagine, this makes sense for the GMAT to ask us these types of questions. We're going into business school, we're going to become masters of business administration, and part of our jobs at any business will be to evaluate potential plans and to propose potential plans. So it makes sense that folks want to assess our understanding of understanding plans and our ability to evaluate them and our ability to propose a next step or a plan to take on a certain situation. Great. How do we ID evaluation of a plan questions? They usually contain these words, evaluate, propose, policy, or plan. Pretty straightforward to identify. Once we do, we can expect that the paragraphs are going to either be a story or some big data dump. They're going to give us a bunch of data and they're going to ask us to evaluate it or propose what to do next. And really on these ones, we've got to concentrate on language before logic. It's going to really help us eliminate answer choices. Let's take a look at some examples. I'm playing as myself this week. Last class I was playing as Jake Becker, but I got you a lot of points. Let's take a look at the question, make sure we're IDing it correctly. Which of the following research experiments would be most likely to provide information to help evaluate the researcher's assertion? So we know it's an, uh, an evaluation and proposal of a plan question. Which of the following research experiments would most likely provide information to help evaluate the researcher's assertion? <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> just getting over a cold. I'm guessing the researcher's assertion is in here. Another advantage of a virtual class is you don't have to catch my cold. <laughs> uh, go ahead and read this paragraph to yourself and we'll work on it together. Great. So I'm going to break this paragraph down for myself and basically I'm just going to say, you know, brittle equals moisture. The tennis rackets become brittle because of moisture issues, not, what does it say? Impact. Go back to the question because I've already forgotten it. Which of the following research experiments would most likely provide information to help evaluate this assertion? This is the assertion that we're evaluating. I pulled it out. So A, measure string tension following racket impact with objects of varying density. Well, the assertion was that it was moisture causing it. So this is not going to address that issue. D, determine, sorry, B, determine the difference in string elasticity for rackets with various metal alloy frames. Again, the assertion is that moisture is causing the brittleness, so uh, testing various metal alloy frames won't help me evaluate that. Compare ball elasticity after racket impact at various velocities. Again, it doesn't seem to be addressing the issue that they want to evaluate as to whether or not it's moisture that's causing the tennis racket strings to become brittle. Determine any changes in string elasticity following water immersions of varying durations. Water, moisture, seems like that might be something to hold on to. And E, compare the optimal string elasticity for a professional tennis player versus a novice player. Again, it's not going to help us evaluate the assertion made here, right? The researcher's assertion was this, this hypothesis. So 